Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Walking Together podcast. My name is Nick Adams, and I'm sitting here with my buddies, Jared. Hello. Jordan. You. And Kyle. Howdy. Uh, on today's episode, it is kind of a grab bag of questions. Each pastor is going to ask two questions of their choosing. Any questions they want don't necessarily have to pertain to the Bible. Uh, who's going first? <laughs> Ready, I'm go. to the left of the dealer, so I'll go first. Kyle. Did we say we were doing goofy ones first? Yes. Okay. Anything you want. It's uh so here we go. All right. What is the fastest any of you have driven? And in what car? Mm. Got it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh when I first got my license, I had a nineteen ninety six V six Honda Accord. And it took about 15 minutes, but I went 140 miles an hour. Oh, my God. On I-40. Does your mom know this? I think so. I didn't think they'd go that fast. That's it, took, it took a long time. Where were you going? Uh, I did remember you, the did first... Did you just push it to the floor and... Yeah, just like... <laughs> pedal to Went the until it quit. Mm. Um... Did, uh, the first so what did day, the speedometer go to, though? 140. So you might... Could you have been going faster than 140? It'll, it would go a little past, but like that... I mean, it sounded like it was... In a <laughs> disintegrate. 7,000 RPM. <laughs> um, I remember the first day I got my license, I drove to Garner, the Best Buy, to get a CD player because my CD player didn't work. And like... I don't know. You're young and dumb. I got on iPhone. It's to... Boringest, most straightest road. Back then, you know, almost 20 years ago, there wasn't near the amount of traffic going to Garner as there is now. But anyway, carry on. Uh, I would say mine was um, 1998. I had a 1984 Chevrolet Corvette. With a V8 crossfire fuel injected. It's kind of ragged out. But <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was the, the night of the state playoff championships for soccer. And I was running late, me and my buddy Matthew. And I think we got it to about 120 mile an hour on community drive before we had to turn. But that was about the fastest I ever drove. I'm not a real fast driver. <laughs> All right. Uh, um. I don't know what year it was, but um, I at one point I had uh, a Jeep Cherokee Sport. And I think it's shaped like a brick. Yeah. And I was driving out to Cedar Island to go duck hunting, and it's, a, it's just flat and straight for a long time out there. I think I got to like 110 or something. But I was just like, man, I'm going to see how fast I can go. There's no one around. <laughs> Went pretty fast. And then I started feeling uncomfortable. I was like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> mm. when, when those lines, dash lines become a solid line, you're then like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a couple buddies in high school that they were all into muscle cars and they had uh, Mustangs. And I was never, I never drove any of them, but I remember riding in them sometimes. And those things are powerful, probably like your Corvette. And I remember being in those things and taking off and you're glued to the back mm. of your seat. And then you get like everything. It's like you're going into the future. You, you, Tunnel hit warp, vision. you get warp speed and you're, you know, every, all the lines and the lights and everything start going. This, I don't know, man. It's a little scary. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Kyle? I don't want to go fast. <laughs> um, so I had a uh, 06 Acura TL. I oh, love those, that thing. Those things would get up and go. They, yeah. It it uh it got a little bit uh up to speed quicker than the um than your Honda. But I coming back one night from Raleigh on forty, uh just decided let's let's see what it'll do. I ain't never really opened it up a whole lot. So uh put the pedal to the floor. Hit about one twenty and that's whenever I was like, Okay. Uh, it was dark. Um oh. And uh, I was like, I, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't have done that, that at night. I, it well, was, the it other, was during the, the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing about it, what, what got me, though, was I was uh, I was already getting sleepy. Like, this is a recipe for uh, 
disaster right here. So went ahead and toned it on back to 90. All my uncles and grandpa were mechanics and drag raced and went to the drag strip and so like they almost made like it was what fun fun for them was putting you in the car as a kid and terrifying you (laughs) (laughs) going as fast (laughs) as you can go oh man well none of us topped 140 so i think the fastest and scaredest i've ever been though was um my dad used to tell me this story when he was a kid he came down here to surf city surfing he said he had a Chevy Nova, and he made it back from Surf City to Goldsboro in 55 minutes. And, um, of course, that was the days before all, you know, traffic and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And my car, not that not what at that time, I was actually driving my parents' car, broke down at the beach, and so I had to ride back with my friend. And I just happened, so, hey, man, I told him that story, and he had a Firebird. <laughs> he said, 55 minutes? I could beat that. And he proceeded to try to be that and actually tied that record Good coming night. back. And his, his Firebird, it was actually the V6 one, it, it would cut off at 110. Like, you not actually turn the engine off, but you couldn't go. And then it would the speedometer would go back, and then it would eventually allow you to press the gas again and do, and do like that. I guess that's how they were wired. And we passed cars on double yellow lines and fishtailed off the I mean, it was – I pray I, – I'm so thankful I made it past – and made it home because when we got to the last, right before the entrance of our neighborhood, he he said, we were like, it's 54 minutes. He's like, I've got a minute to get back. And he ran the stop sign. He has to make an immediate right turn. And when he does, he goes into this person's yard. <laughs> and he gets it kind of sideways and a car's coming. And they have to slam on brakes and go. And I'm in the back seat just screaming like a girl for my life. And uh, he's like, oh, no, that lady goes to my church. <laughs> So that's, oh, that's the scaredest I've ever been in a car, though. Goodness, Jordan. Next question. I don't know if this is really a question that everybody can answer individually, <laughs> like the driving fast one. But uh, just recently, I thought of something. And what's up with that song, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt? What's up with it? Yeah, like his name is my name too. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a case of identity theft. I you don't understand it. I, yeah, no. I don't understand the song. Like, do do any of y'all know what the deal is with that song? No. Well, we. I was it. sitting in the car driving, and we were. It was actually the whole family we were driving, and <laughs> Lindsay thinks I'm a complete idiot. And I said, "Honey, what's up with that song, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt?" She said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "You know, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt." His name is my name, too. How can both y'all's names be John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith? <laughs> Clearly, my name's not. Why am I singing it? <laughs> well, Jordan has presented you with a challenge <laughs> to look up the history of that song. Like, do you know more lyrics? I don't know more of the lyrics to that. Do you know more of the lyrics? I, yeah. Wherever um, he may go. Um, wherever I go out, the people always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Na, 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 na. <laughs> so I just, I just did a quick Google, <laughs> and it says... Um, was <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not. It's about an infamous serial killer and nobody knew. <laughs> what? And then it says in 1855, this guy's name was John Schmidt. I don't know if this is true. Or why not. would you say that his name is my name too? Like why would you? Because nobody knew who he was. <laughs> I have no idea. That makes a little bit of sense. Caden and Maverick have been catching toads lately, and every time they catch a toad, they they, they started calling the toads Jeffrey Dahmer's. They're like, ooh, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> like, you know, on uh, what's the like? Do you guys know who that is? So, yeah, that's the guy that ate people. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what's the movie with um, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence and oh, uh... and the warden comes up to the prison and all, all the prisoners line up. And I'm that baby's daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he wouldn't know who who actually the daddy was. <laughs> I, have no, I don't know about that one. Oh, I forget the name of the movie. I'll figure it out. Hmm. Yeah, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. I don't know. So if you're listening, you look it up. I got stumped on that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I understand it. Mine was a toss-up between the two. Um but I'm going to go with this one. If you applied to be a part of the Avengers movie, but you were rejected because your superpower was kind of boring, what was it? 
What would your super? What yeah. would your superpower have been? Yeah, you got rejected because your power was kind of boring. So, what was your superpower? Mm. This is requiring some thought. <laughs> the, the, the Jordan didn't preference it well. The Jingle, Jingleheimer <laughs> Schmidt didn't require a lot of thought. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with sticky saliva. <laughs> 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 Like incredibly sticky saliva. <clears throat> like if you were just walking and I somehow spit in front of you and your foot got in my mm. spit, you'd be stuck. <laughs> sticky saliva. Mine would be, oh, I just had the ability to put people to sleep with my singing. You know, they're coming to like, put your hands up. And you're like, turn off the lights. And they just fall asleep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny though. That, like, I Actually, I think that would go in... Maybe not comic book Avengers, but definitely the movie Avengers yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. Jared saying that made me think, you know, my superpower would be confusion <laughs> with the long, slow pauses and slow <laughs> talking. <laughs> They're just hanging on your last word waiting. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, like, be able to throw a can of skull. <laughs> Ninja star. <laughs> Used to be. Diamond Dave Ninja School. Cal, you're last. Oh, man. I don't even know. I had to think about that one. <clears throat> I have been thinking about that one. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that was what I always tell people is my, uh, what, what is my superpower? I can move my scalp without touching it. But that's all that comes to mind. <laughs> hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You could be like Beard Man where your beard like slaps you, people. Yeah, you can like do anything with it. You can... Like the uh, Smurfs movie. Up. Did y'all ever yeah. have talent shows in school? Yeah. Trolls movie. The yeah, Trolls movie. For sure. Well, after school, I used to go to this place called Learning Station, and we'd go to nursing home, and the wow. instructor of the Learning Station made us do a talent show, and I didn't have any talent. <laughs> I could not sing. I couldn't play an instrument. I couldn't juggle. So she makes me get up there, and this is back in, you know, like, you had to do it. There was no... They're going to call you out, and if you just stand there, you just stand there. <laughs> You're gonna I can stand silly. incredibly and, still. And this was in elementary school, like fourth or fifth grade. And uh, <laughs> the only thing I could think to do was I rolled over and put my feet over my head and made him touch the floor. <laughs> that, was, that was all I had. <laughs> Bendy man. <laughs> wow. Just, you can scorpion on demand. Yeah. That's Front, did you do it like... Did they clap? Did they bend regular way or did you bend it over your back? No, I didn't. Bend he didn't right. scorpion. Oh, okay. Because mm. that is a talent. Like if you can a back, scorpion, like a back bend. Yeah, yeah. Like if no. you can lay flat on the ground, on like <clears throat> belly down, and then make your feet go over your head, and t like that's that's a yeah. legit talent. I have never been able to do that. No, I've seen people do it, but it was on accident. All right. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> next question I thought of. Which was one I heard probably this week, and and I, I'm interested to hear what. So, starting with Kyle, if you're on death row, what's your last meal? Mm -hmm. From appetizer to drink to oh. entree to dessert. Appetizers, the chili triple, triple dipper. Triple dipper combo with, from Chili. Yep, yeah, with, with Southwest egg rolls. <laughs> hey, have y'all ever had them? <laughs> and the dipping sauce? Good night. Uh, the Asian Zing chicken tenders on it. <laughs> Let's go double order uh, Southwest egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting All right. Uh Dinner. Let's see. This one had to be a... Uh, let's do a 16-ounce right by. No, let's... Yeah, 16. That'll do good. Yeah, if you're uncomfortably full, it don't matter because you're <laughs> yeah. getting taken out anyway. Well, no, I was I was actually thinking, do I do I want to do that or do I want to do a 24 ounce? Good <laughs> gracious, I'm going out with a bang, man. <laughs> you're gonna explode yeah. out of every direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> every orifice, <laughs> food's just gonna blow out everywhere. Well, I don't know. Are you getting electrocuted? Are you getting injected? What are you getting? You're, uh, it don't matter. You're going. Yeah, you're. Do I get to last meal? <laughs> Because uh, if you're getting electrocuted, so, it's blowing out. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Sampler. That's fine. Sampler. So sampler. From Chili's. The Triple Dipper. All right. 16 ounce ribeye. Cooked medium. To somewhere between medium rare and medium. Um, I don't even need no sides. Oh, no. I take it back. I do. I want one side. Uh, and that is the French fries from Low Tide Steakhouse with their fry sauce. It's delicious. And then for dessert, can I have two desserts? It's your Death meal. Row, you can it's have your meal. All right. I want a uh, 10 layer chocolate cake. Not the whole thing, just a slice. Um, and. <laughs> microwave cherry cobbler. <laughs> what? It's delicious. Right. Takes you, five minutes to make. What are you delicious. drinking? <sighs> Let's do a... One's a dessert drink. Want to have a coffee? All right. A uh, vanilla latte. And a Dr. Pepper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sun drop. Sun drop. Sun yeah. drop. Okay. Yep. You're going you're dead you're dead anyway. Don't yeah. you know, sugar yep. it up. Jordan, right. what you got? Dude, I don't know. Um I guess an appetizer. Appetizer will go with uh some pizza bites. <laughs> <laughs> like bagel bites or pizza rolls? The pizza rolls. The pizza okay. I don't know, bagel bites are good too. The bagel yeah, we'll go bagel bites. I'll go with a couple bagel bites. Um, the meal, I think I go with um, like the world's best cheesesteak. Um, Where's that from? I don't. I don't know. Just where Philadelphia. I, yeah, just like a Imported. really good. I want a really good cheesesteak. I want like made with wagyu beef. I want the best mm. cheesesteak that's ever been made. Mm. Um. I don't know, dude. The the cheesesteak from um, from baked out in Sneeds Ferry. That's mm-hmm. a good cheesesteak. I don't know if y'all had that cheesesteak. Yeah, that cheesesteak is bussin', bussin', bussin'. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with your cheesesteak? Um, I, I I like just uh, sautéed onions and uh, and banana peppers. Maybe maybe a couple jalapenos in there. Mm. What kind um, of any sides? Any cheese? Mozzarella. Okay. Yeah, sides, uh, fries. The um, I think fries from, um, from Two Guys Grill. Mm-hmm. The, with two the lemon, yeah. You like the lemon <sighs> lime? Those fries, good. Yeah, two Guys fries. Those are the best. I've only had Five Guys. Only Five Guys. <clears throat> Why go to Five Guys when Two Guys can do it? <laughs> <laughs> Used to be seven, and they split up. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's just an unwise business plan. Why pay Five Guys when Two Guys can do? Are they part of your family? Is what I want to know. I don't, not that I know of. I should ask. Might get the friends and family. See, when I when I started my business, Guy Construction, everybody was asking Guy Royal if he started a construction <laughs> company. Because I just kind of moved back too. But um, yeah. all right, uh, dessert. Mm. I think I'll just go with like a big bowl of chocolate chip, uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Mm. What you drinking? Um. I think with the meal, I'll have a big glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, that's it. Jerry, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a twist on mine. Um, I'm gonna do only foods from around here in this area. All right. So, uh, what's the nearest? Uh, like in Sur City. <clears throat> yeah, and the surrounding areas. Okay. Something you can get by. And then, if you're listening to this podcast, you should go check it out and try to go. Uh, Get some. Eat your last meal. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right, we'll start off with, um, you, you said the appetizer. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know if it's be, really be considered appetizer, but something I can <laughs> eat a lot of is um, the chips and salsa from Burrito Shack. The medium mm. salsa is my absolute favorite. I could eat that by the by the jug. The what? The medium salsa from Burrito Shack. Oh, yeah? And the chips and salsa. I'd you come in with that. Oh, wait. Lot. Can I change my appetizer real quick? 
No. You're Tom. You're no, Tom. You're dead. <laughs> you're already dead. What, what you got, Jordan? <laughs> Those egg roll things that Guy makes at Surf City Barbecue. Oh, Barbecue shoot. sandwich egg roll. Dude. Okay. That egg Red roll. egg roll. That egg roll is amazing. Well done, guys. They are really good. Sorry. There you go. So we'll start off with that. And then um, I would have to say I probably want to get that brisket sandwich from Surf City Barbecue. Oh. If you hadn't had the brisket sandwich, man, it is pretty, pretty delicious and incredible. Mm-hmm. And then um, I would say I'd follow the brisket sandwich up with uh, a steak with, from Rick's with the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh rub on it. A little bit extra Pittsburgh rub, cooked medium for sure. And... Uh, that is that's pretty good, delicious as well. And then um, I would definitely want to make sure I'd get some ice cream from. It's a toss up between Boombalati's and the Surf City Scoop. Both of those are uh, pretty good. And so, but if I have my choice, I'd get the cookie, the Oreo one from um, from Surf City Scoop, and then I would get the what's the what's the one. Um, Ah, the name's leaving me. At, Where's Surf at City Scoop? It's right beside the skating rink down at the south end. It's huh. like homemade. Yeah, I haven't been good. down there yet. It's good stuff. You it's need a micro it creamery. Is yep. it relatively new? Uh, a couple years, two years. Yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, yeah I haven't been there. Well, why is it? Why right is beside it, post office. Why is it Surf City Scoops in South Thompson? That's what I want to know. Or is it just called Scoops? For some reason, I keep no, thinking it's it called Surf City Scoop. Yeah. But check that out. So. And then uh, I'd have to make sure I got some sort of coffee drink from Diver. Um, lattes are good. The homemade syrups are always my favorite. But that would definitely be be up there. Was that your drink? Or is that part of your dessert? <clears throat> yes. That's the dessert? No, that's the drink because I get a dessert too. So the ice cream. Okay. What are, you, are you drinking anything before before the dessert and dessert drink? Okay, what's your meal drink? I, sweet Surf City tea. tap water. Sweet, <laughs> sweet tea. <laughs> sweet tea. Anybody knows me, I... Drink a lot of sweet tea. Is there a place favorite. that makes a better sweet tea? You know, I, I tell you who has pretty good sweet tea last Careful night. Careful now. <laughs> You're going to hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> Am I? Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, I don't really care whose feelings <laughs> I hurt. Uh, my favorite place to get... i tell you who's got good sweet tea. Low Tide has good sweet tea, and also Ovalonial has good sweet tea. Mm-hmm. Whose feelings am I hurting by not saying their name? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, homemade ranch dressing. You guys like homemade oh, ranch dressing? Gosh, yeah. Mm. It's good stuff. I don't know what I put it on, but I put it on a lot of stuff. So I just definitely need that. You just put a couple drops in your sweet tea? <laughs> I don't know if it would go on the tea or the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, appetizer. Definitely some steamed oysters with uh, pickled pepper relish. Um, meal. I would have a teriyaki made it marinated skirt steak or flank steak, cut thin, medium. Uh, some it's hard s- to get it thin when it's cut. I mean, uh, medium. Some sort of. Um, you just got to sear it. That's it. Whipped sweet potato. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably. Some bacon wrapped asparagus with this molasses glaze on it. Um, I would want a, with my oysters, I would want a fat tire (laughs) beer. Um, Because we're we're going out. We're done, guys. This is (laughs) last. You know what I'm saying? Uh, And then I would drink water with my meal. Some sort of sparkling water is seltzer water. Um, <laughs> dessert, key lime pie mm. all day, mm. every day. Uh, my wife makes key lime pie. You know, it's, it normally has like a graham cracker crust. She makes a pretzel crust, so it's like salty and sweet oh. and tangy. Mm. Um, is she making your key lime pie? Yeah. And Chrissy, if you're listening to this, we'd love this some for the next podcast. Or, say, we need a sample uh, some. key lime pie and uh, my grandma's lemon meringue pie. Mm. Uh, both of those, both of them, yep. And <laughs> to finish to wash all that pie down, I would like like a Americano coffee. 
Nice. That's it. I realized yeah. I didn't. I left off my side. Uh, you said something that made me think of it, and this one's not from around here, but my favorite is the sweet potato casserole from Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Have you guys ever had that? In the little dish. <sighs> yeah. Sorry, me ma. It's, <laughs> it's better than yours. <laughs> Can I can I give some honorable mentions for myself? Uh oh, sure. Um, the mac and cheese from uh, uh, in Beulahville, Mike's Farm, Mike's Farm, oh. and the uh, ham. <laughs> Good biscuits. night, man. Yeah. Have y'all ever had like grilled Brussels sprouts that are like still on the stalk or whatever? Oh, yeah. Can I add, add to my appetizer? <laughs> sure. With the oysters, I would have Mister Roberts' sweet potato biscuits. Oh. And he takes the ham and uh, fries it and puts a little bit of sugar on the ham to take mm. some of the saltiness out. And sweet biscuit, salty ham. There you go. Half the podcast is talking about food. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Where are we eating? <laughs> All right, so we already ate. It's a good thing we are, we already ate. If, yeah, if we did I'd be this, out of here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we wouldn't be recording two episodes today. Tell us where you would uh, <clears throat> send in, and tell us where you would what your last meal would. Be. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, all right, so serious questions now. Yep, you ready? All right, so uh, my serious question was: What has been your favorite moment in ministry? No pressure. Of all time? Of all time. Mm. Well, I can only remember what's happened lately. <laughs> that's that's fine. You want me to go first? Go for it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, a lot of people listening might think that uh, it, it'd be something that has actually happened at church, and it's not been for me, uh, in a way that like, I, I get to do a lot of, uh, ministry, just having Jesus conversations with people. Um, whenever I go out and play at different places, restaurants, bars, in anywhere and everywhere in between that. And, um, some of the coolest ministry moments, um, I got to use plural cause it's, it's been really cool, but being able to have Jesus conversations with people after I finish a gig or something, being able to sit down and you know, clearly they, uh, it, sometimes it's been people that um, are clearly in distress, you know, and I get to sit down and talk to them about uh, about what's going on, but then actually share the gospel with them. Mm-hmm. Um, like that, that's, that's super cool. Uh, a couple, one of the other things that's happened uh, a few times is people that I've talked with after, you know, we start always talking about singing and end up you know, they'll, they'll ask me like, Hey, well, you know, what do you, what do you do when you're not singing? I'm like, well, I'm glad you asked. I'm a pastor. And, uh, that's happened a few times, but some of my, one of my favorite times was, um, this guy, we didn't really get to talk a whole lot, but I told him that and he's like, Oh, well, cool. And, uh, next thing I know, I didn't even invite this guy to church, but he ended up showing up and he was like, man, I said, I want you to know, like you being at the bar the other night was an answer to prayer. He was like, I've been praying for months about where we needed to go to church. And um, he said, you know, you didn't tell me anything about it. He said, but I went home and looked you up, found out you were a pastor here, and that's why I'm here today. I was like, well, cool. I'm glad you're here. You know, you saying that reminds me of the statistic of in the book of Acts, there's 39 miracles that happen. And I think only three of them happen at church or at the temple. Right. And, uh, you know, you telling that story just reminded me, like, that's, you know, a lot of those moments happen outside of church and how you don't, you don't change yourself depending on what the setting. Right. When there's a reason, too, that Jesus spent most of his time outside of the synagogue. So those have been some of my favorite ministry moments? Um, I think one that comes to mind most recently in light of our conversation that we had today, um, this morning as the pastor sitting and talking, um, I think seeing just people grow and mature um, 
from, you know, when I was a youth pastor, uh, there was a couple of guys who, you know, were in the schools and I try to go like eat lunch at, at the public schools and get a chance to meet different people. And one of the guys that um, I got to know was at the college, uh, at the, what do you call it when you have the high school at the college? Anyway, the middle college. Early college. <clears throat> and um, so I got a chance to meet him. He did video work and then a couple other guys um, that eventually started coming to youth ministry and, um, you know, gave their hearts to the Lord and started serving. Those guys uh, became interns. And then just to watch them mature and grow in their faith, you know, I got a chance to baptize uh, some of those guys and then eventually um, came on staff at that church. Um, and now um, some of them are senior pastors. One of them mm. is executive pastor. They're they're leading their families. Their kids are growing up in the Lord. And, you know, this, I wouldn't say this is probably like the most – you know, the number one thing, but in light of our conversations we were having today yeah. about that, like it just it sparked in me to see like when you're pouring into, you know, sometimes we get to see the benefit of, um, you know, the harvest taking place. Other times we're just sowing the seed and, and watering it. But when you see something mature and the Bible says that God is the one that made it grow, mm -hmm. um, seeing that happen, it just makes you go like, wow, all that time I put into it and God allowed me to be a part of it. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Nick, Jordan, what y'all got? Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, I don't know, th this last uh trip to Panama was pretty awesome. Um the past the past two years, but this year specifically being able to be there for two weeks, um kind of got to see some fruit of, you know, over a decade of time spent in a place where, you know, sometimes you feel like you're you're doing a whole lot of nothing <laughs> and then you've find out later that you know it's not, it's not even anything that I did outside of just you know loving people but seeing people's lives changed um has been it was really cool like I saw a lot of fruit um and got to hear some stories about things that I you know I didn't even I don't remember them happening and then hearing about fruit from something that I didn't even remember happening you know it's like you, it's like when you talk to somebody you know you're at a bar and you're just like oh yeah I'm a pastor and then you find out this guy comes to church you know so it's just those little yeah. those little points in time where you have a conversation or an exchange with somebody and, and, and then you go on you forget about it and it seems pointless and then you know years and years down the road you you find out from that person or whatever that that was like a a big impact like a huge mm -hmm. thing that yeah. that changed the course of their life. their spiritual life yeah like you know that that's i think that's probably for me yeah um it was a really really good trip i got i got to hear um if you want to hear well, one one in particular, is it was one of the, I think I told a couple of y'all when I came back there was this <clears throat> there's this guy who lived in the town, and he was like straight up like gangster guy. I think I told y'all about mm -hmm. this. So this guy was full on gangster like drug trafficker and everything, and um, he asked me, he he came to my house one day. And uh, he said, hey, I, I, he looked really distressed. And he was a big, scary dude. And he came up to me, and he looked scared. And I was like, oh, no, what is up with <laughs> this? Like, this guy's, like, freaking out. And he was like, I need your help. I'm like, okay, um, what's up? He said, I need you to take me and my kid to uh, to this place because he's sick. And at first, you know, my Spanish isn't perfect. And so at f he's talking about a kid sick, and he needs to take him somewhere. And so I'm thinking he needs to take him to a clinic and... But it turns out he wanted me to take his kid to a witch doctor. <clears throat> and um, and I said, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not taking your kid to a witch doctor. And he got, he got kind of frustrated and upset. And I said, uh, I said, well, I said, I, 
I I know of a power that's bigger than this witch doctor. And he's like, what are you talking about? He said, well, let's go over to your house and I'll pray for your kid. You know, because I believe that God, um, you know, I believe that the, the, the power of Jesus is bigger than any other power that, that you, you know, think that is, is up for offer for your kid. So I went over there and, you know, I don't know if you guys have prayed, you know, for people to be healed or whatever. And, you know, a lot of, you know, you see a friend and their, you know, their back hurts or whatever, and you pray for them and then you walk away or whatever. And that's more or less kind of what happened. Like I went over to the house and ended up being like 12 people in the house, like family, you know, because a lot of them, they, they just live together, the big mm-hmm. family. The, you got the grandpa, the grandma, the brothers, sisters, like everybody's just chilling in the house. And uh, so the kid, the kid had had a fever, I guess, <clears throat> for a bunch of days. And, and so, um, you know, went over and I, I held the kid and, um, and, and I explained to the family, I said, this is what, this is what's going to happen. I said, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray to God. And, you know, I told, I told him that, you know, Jesus said that anything that you ask the Father in my name will be given to you. I said, so if this kid gets healed, it's God's power. I said, it's not my power. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's trying to explain them because they were used to a power that comes from, you know, witch doctor, wherever they claim that source comes from. I, I don't know, but, but anyways, I, I try to be intentional the best that I could to explain like what, what was happening and what yeah. I was doing. And so I prayed for him, um, prayed for him, uh, and then, and then left and I, I totally forgot about it. <clears throat> and this happened, this happened over, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe. Mm. Um, so this guy, this last time that I was in Panama, actually in May, when I was in, in Panama in May, he told me, he, he, he reminded me of that story. And he said that, that that was when I started to take uh, God into serious consideration. I said, well, why? He said, because my kid was healed. And, uh, and I was like, are you kidding me? He said, yeah. He said, when you prayed for my kid, he said within, within a couple hours, the fever was totally gone and he was totally fine. Mm. Um, and, uh, so, you know, those are the things that, that was, that was just an example of other things that have, that have ha- that happened, you know, in the many, in the time that I spent in Panama thinking that you're doing a lot of stuff that doesn't, that you know, doesn't make a difference. Mm. And it does, and there's there's probably even countless more stories that if I if there were the opportunity, you could you know you could find out. And I bet all of us have stories of there's the opportunity of that kind of story. I think yeah. for all of us, you know, anybody that's been intentional in relationship and spending time with people and praying for people, that you know if if we could if we could somehow get in contact with every single person that we've had um, that kind of experience with, so. That's, yeah. I, um, see, uh, you know, I cannot, I've been sitting here trying to think about all that God has allowed me to be a part of, and, uh, it gets overwhelming because you don't deserve it. Like, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't because, you know, it was just loving on people, it, and 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 sometimes the devil tries to deceive you in like, what am I doing here? I'm only driving a van, or I'm only loading and unloading. Lo- I'm only doing logistics. I'm only doing administration. I'm only, and you get kind of weary from m- managing or taking care of all the things, and um something that's happened lately uh and i love hearing all y'all stories because it just reminds me and encourages me to you know keep on keeping on because it's not about right now you never know the impact you have on a person Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's at a bar whether it's at somebody's home whether it's in panama whether it's you know at, at school or but for god to show his mercy and kindness to allow us to even be able like we should be doing that regardless 
Yeah. So the fact that God lets you get a glimpse of it is just a bonus. Um, cause I think about like Moses, um, you know, he didn't even get to go into the promised land, but he still got like a first class seat with God on a tour of the promised land after he was taken. And, um, anyway, a uh, ministry moment for me was camp this year. Um, it was my sixth year going. Um, it's always a lot of work to get there. Uh, and normally something happens. The bus broke down as soon as we pulled in the <laughs> pulled up to the gate. It's and, not a gathering outing without a bus breaking down. Right? You know, you, kids are throwing up or getting sick, and <clears throat> nobody threw up this time, though, right? Uh, nobody threw up on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the doors wouldn't open because everything's controlled by air and hydraulics. And so we couldn't get the luggage out and everybody, you know, it's just like, uh, we, we go to leave from here that morning and one of the vans, there was an, an insurance mix up and we couldn't take one of the vans. And then we had to put seats back in the other van and move luggage around. And it was like, man. Devil's trying to do everything he can to get people out of that intentionality of loving on people by distracting you with all the problems, right? Mm. My guitar don't work, or my amp don't work, or nobody's here. What am I even doing here? Or, you know, you know all the th- things. Um, and by the second day, we're doing the morning devotion, and. I don't even rem- remember what the devotion really was about. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, Lord, it's really hard to come because I have to leave Chrissy at home with Henry and Lainey and, and me and Olivia come and I'm trying to manage Olivia's diabetes at the same time of trying to make sure I don't lose eight kids <laughs> with a helper, which I'm responsible really for the whole cabin and you're just going around counting the whole time and and making sure like the, the I, these parents have entrusted me with their kids and you know all these things are going through your mind and you're like getting distracted by it. Mm. And we do this morning devotion and I don't think nothing of it. I mean if I'm being super honest, I'm I'm telling them about you know, how do you get to know somebody by spending time with them and, and trying to help them see, like, you got to have, if you want to get to know Jesus, if you want to follow him, you got to spend time with him. And how do we do that? You know, praying, reading. Jesus gave up his spirit, which dwells in us when you believe and receive him. And um, one kid says he wants to be baptized. And... I've been a part of baptism. I've helped, assisted in baptism, but I've never led a whole baptism. Like it been on my shoulders to steward people through it. And um, to make a long story short, after that day, you know, he's like, I want to get baptized in the lake. And he wanted to do it like, Let's go to the lake right now and talk to his mom and dad. And his mom and dad, of course, if I was a mom and dad and that was your kid, you would selfishly, like, I want to be there. Or I want my family to be there. I want to be able to celebrate this kind of monument in your life. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, man, now i got to have this conversation and it might not go. I'm going to it might be confrontational because I'm going to have to say like, this is, this is their relationship with God. It's not yours. It's not about you. And I know, I understand anyway, by that time, by the time I get to around to talking to the parents and talking with Beth and seeing who knows who and who has a relationship and all that, there's five more kids that want to get baptized. And it wasn't because of me. It wasn't because of, but it was because people decided to show up and they, 
made a decision. I'm going to love on these kids, whether I feel equipped or whether I feel relatable, I'm, I'm going to love on them. And because all those people came together and loved on those kids, I got to be a part of baptizing kids in the lake at Camp Caraway, which had n- never happened before mm-hmm. with, with the gathering being there at least. Um, and so we do the baptisms and I ask the kids, who do you want to get in the water with you? And, you know, they have somebody planted that seed and watered it, right? And to be able to allow those people to be a part of baptism and to even do the baptisms was, there was so much fruit from that. Mm. The re- part of the rest of the week of camp, it was, you know, the director of camp talking about, you know, kind of changing the way he looked at baptism and the way they do it at, at camp and how, like, it doesn't have to be the way it always, you know, we do what works or we do what we've always done. It, like, if you just step out in faith wherever you are, um, it can happen in a moment anywhere. It don't have to. You know, it don't have to be a baptismal pool at a church. It don't have yeah. to be on. We got to walk across to the beach and do it at the beach because we're the, the gathering and we're the beach church. It, you know, and being for people to be able to experience that and me be a part of it, and I'm sitting and I I get overwhelmed because of, I don't deserve any of it. I didn't. I didn't really do anything, and. uh then, you know, I'm having to apologize to God. I'm sitting here complaining about luggage and having to manage too many things and not really wanting to go because of, you know, when you t- leave your responsibilities here, they don't go away. They just pile up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, God just kind of – God does things only God can do. At the same time, he's humbling me. And kind of disciplining me. And then at the same time, he's blessing me and giving, showing me mercy and grace that I don't deserve all at the same time. And uh, it was a huge experience. And it just really, I say it all the time and people don't understand. It's hard to understand what I'm saying. And I'm not, I don't do the best job in the world at communicating it. But going to camp is like a mission trip and a retreat Mm -hmm. for me. Um, And, once you go and once you get there, God always shows up in some sort of way. Hmm. Um, and if you have that mindset when you go to do gigs or when you're going to do – it happens a lot when I'm working on somebody's air conditioner. I'll be complaining because i got work to do and, or complaining about what job i got to do. And sometimes I miss the opportunity. Or the <laughs> That's right. Like God put me there with this person to show them Jesus. Mm-hmm. But if I'm worried about myself, I'm going to miss the opportunity and your circumstances ain't going to change. Right. Uh, camp for me was, was a big deal. Um, I guess I'm trying to say all this just to say like, those ministry moments happen all the time mm-hmm. if you're clinging to God and lower, constantly lowering yourself. Yep. But yeah, camp was was definitely uh, something I'll hold on to for a long time. Um, to be able to see Sam and Tim and, and hear them talk about what it did for them and how spiritually when you get to lead somebody in baptism, what it does to you spiritually. Uh, You know, Sam's got a bond with them boys now that, you know, will be a lifelong thing. So that's awesome. I would say camp. Definitely. Well, fellas, I love hearing all those stories, but <laughs> I think we're going to handle land the plan on this one. Y'all good with that? Can y'all keep your questions for next time? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do another grab bag episode if everybody liked this. Yeah, no, we, I mean, 
That was a good one to land on. I think so. <laughs> All righty. Do it, Kyle. All righty. Here we go. Well, y'all, it has been another fun episode of Walking Together. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening and uh, hearing all the fun stuff, silly stuff, uh, all of our last meals. Don't forget to uh, let us know your last meal and uh, tell us your favorite ministry moments because it's not just for pastors. You and your life have ministry moments and divine appointments. So we'd love to hear about your stories too. Um, You can let us know at podcasts uh, at gatheringservecity.com or uh, yeah, yeah, that's the email podcasts at gatheringsurfcity.com uh, if you want to see any of the other podcasts that the gathering produces you can go to gatheringsurfcity.com slash podcasts uh, we'd love to hear from you guys we'd love to answer any more questions you might have otherwise you just might be getting some more grab bag episodes until then so uh, if you enjoyed this though let us know leave us a five star review uh, we don't care what you say well no we do uh, leave us a positive five star review uh, leave it on Spotify, Apple, or any other player that you may listen on. And uh, make sure to sh- subscribe and share. Uh, we do thank you guys for listening. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to uh, talk with you guys in this way and for pulling up the fifth chair with us. Um, so I hope you guys have a great week, great day, and we will talk to you next time. Later, y'all. <laughs>